there. The problem is you're sitting. Um, there's little stones at your table. Remember, I don't know, those are the few that came last month. Um, I talked about pick a word that's your word that okay, you're going to focus on, uh, you want to focus on for the year. And that's kind of like your intention. And um, so I thought I'd go ahead as a little Valentine gift and bring you these little intention stones. And then you write your word on and then you take it back, put it at your desk, whatever, and just so it kind of reminds you of what you want to focus on for you. Thank you. Fun. So we're going to do our presentation. Please are right here. Yeah, you got a whole bunch of color markers. That, this was mine like last year. So it's an idea. You can do whatever you want. So um, anyway, it's just been fun. Um, today we have. Uh, do not throw rocks at me. <laughs> that is not what we're doing today. Eat daily. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, you know, that's great. We're not watching it. Anyway, we have Taylor Fry is here today. And she's with American Royal. And she's going to talk about the complex that they're going to be building out um, west. I think it's right by Village West. I don't know if it's going to be but um, I'm a horse person. I'm very excited about it. Robert here is, uh, we both have horses out at Saddle and Sirloin Club and are good friends and we're excited about the new American Royal Complex and I um, hope everyone else will be too. Um, in a minute, I'll introduce Julie, who's with Hilton Garden, who's a member who's hosting and sponsoring today. I'm providing a whole lunch in the room and all that, so that's really nice. Is Julie in here right now? Over here. I've got my back to you, Okay, well, I'll introduce you in a minute. Um, and then next month's luncheons, I don't forget to tell you, is going to be uh, FIA March Madness. So it's every every um, year that luncheon falls on the Thursday where they start the Big 12 basketball tournament. And so then I always come to the luncheon, and then I go down the power and like hang out with my friends, watch games. And I'm like, we should just like hang out and watch the games together. So Argosy is going to host it. They're going to open up the Lucky Taco restaurant for us. So it'll be a cash bar. We'll have all the TVs and the basketball, whatever, whatever games playing at the time. Hopefully, can you? Um, we'll be playing, and so it's just going to be a fun networking. We're not going to have a speaker. We have a sponsor, Kansas uh, Manufacturing Solutions is going to be sponsoring, and we're looking for another one. So they'll be sponsoring. They'll be able to say some things and market their company and. Um, and we'll have some prizes and drawings. I was gonna do basketball bingo, but it's not allowed. It's against like gaming rules. We don't want to hurt can't we? And that's the RC up with their their gaming um, uh, problems or yeah, I mean, up their licensing. That's what I mean. Um, so anyway, I'm trying to think of anything else. Uh, FIA is currently working on um, <coughs> There's a special use permit that's been applied for by a resident member um, for public services for a solid waste transfer station in Fairfax. Uh, we've had a lot of discussions, and because of these discussions, FIA has um, decided to oppose the transfer stations for a variety of reasons. We'll be sending information out. Um, so if you have any opinions on that, you have a business in Fairfax, reach out to me. Because uh, that's going to go to vote between, uh, for the full commission in two weeks. So, um, Steve, can you think of anything else? Signage. Oh, signage. Uh, we are working on the uh, selecting the company that's going to design and build the Fairfax signage. They have the the B25 bomber plane on it. Uh, so, it'll be a big investment, and we're excited about that. Um, so, hopefully, that'll be up at uh, some, some point during this year. Hopefully. Um, there's a lot of things that, to work out. So I think that's all we have for Fairfax right now. So let's go around and have everyone introduce themselves. Uh, just say who you're with and the name of your company. And we'll start here, Julie. I'm Julie Nielsen, Director of Sales here at the Hilton Garden. Uh, Taylor Fire with the American Royal. I look forward to speaking with you all. And Kendra also with the, uh, with the Hilton Garden Inn. And I'm Patrice, also with the Hilton Garden Inn. Steve Schaefer with Central Bank, Kansas City. Robert Motley, I'm with Coley Rental. 
Thomas Vegas, CPA of Urban Brown. John Salzler with the Wyandotte Economic Development Council. I'm Michael Bean with Urban Brown. I'm Dave Stein, I'm with Kansas Manufacturing <coughs> Solutions. Ryan Hespio with Exxon Mobiles. Uh, Joe McWhorter with Exxon Mobiles. Tracy Rathbun with Kellogg's. Ryan McAfee with Mac Water Technologies. Hopkins, Pat McGee with Innovative Facility Solutions. Yeah, I'm Andrew oh, Fix I'm with, uh, sorry about that, <laughs> with uh, PT Solutions Physical Therapy. I'm Chris Kelly with Midwest Sign Company. Mary Alani with PT Solutions Outpatient Physical and Occupational Therapy Services, and we have a location here in KCK. <laughs> Steve Daly, Fairfax <coughs> Drainage District, and FIA Vice President. Uh, Terry Wynn with Trinet. Jeff Birch with Muscle and All. Okay. <coughs> David Nicholson, Muscle and All Contractors. Todd Fletcher, Watchman Security. Sarah. Eric Bosch, Mark One Electric. Uh, Joni Sheely, uh, Director of Operations for Giving the Basics. Madison Hamilton, Giving the Basics. Gina McCord, United Way of Wyandotte for me. Kathy Hunter, United Way of Wyandotte County. John Shortall with Universal Construction Company. Paige Kennedy with Universal Construction Company. Lindsay French with Vario, Landscape Architecture and Citywide Planning. <coughs> Susanna? I'm sorry, y'all. i got to see your faces. <laughs> Susanna Seekers with IHG Solutions. <coughs> uh, Carlos Kiosk with the Board of Public Utilities and the FIA Board Member. Oh, and there's that. <laughs> Tiffany Johnson, Kansas City Board of Public Utilities. Randy Dingus, Bank of Labor. Pia Perales, Bank of Labor. Steve Cabrera, Bank of Labor. Mary Mullen, Bank of Labor. Sam <laughs> <laughs> Dominguez, Bank of Labor. <laughs> I'm Andrew, Andrew Martin with First State Bank of Trust. Kim Singleton with First State Bank of Trust. Tara Laws with Goddard. Paul Hancock with Kansas City, Kansas Community College. I too need to see you all, Diane <laughs> Smith, First Business Bank, and Fairfax Festival. Yes, yeah, thank you. I forgot that part. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, Kate Kershaw with the Kansas City, Kansas Chamber of Commerce. Kara Miller, Bank of America. Greg Debs, Grafton and Staffing Companies. Is that everyone at your table? Yes. Yeah. 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 I'll stand up so you can see my hat. <laughs> <laughs> He's always the man with the hat. <laughs> Joe Vaught. Retired commercial real estate broker, board member, festival member, etc. That's <laughs> party member. While I'm up with my piece of pie, Richard Reese, Avapo, and Rebecca took me as well. She's my business partner, and both of us are on the um, FIA Festival Committee. Yes. Chad Oler, First State Bank and Trust. Jason Kane, Reardon Pallet Company. Uh, Dan Reardon Sr., Reardon Pallet Company, and also a Fairfax board member. Dan Reardon Jr., Reardon Pallet Company. Scott Chris with First Business Bank. Great, and you guys want to introduce yourselves? Sure, I'm Rusty Medjuk with Mark One Electric. Rich Gilbert, Mark One Electric, and also a board member. Okay, is that everyone? Haven't missed anyone? Well, welcome, and um, you know, please, part of this is uh, for everyone to get to know each other and network and do business together. So uh, lots of businesses in Fairfax here and associate members. So um, we also haven't gotten to it yet, but are going to have a directory so you can all easily access each other on the website. So coming soon. And uh, Fairfax Festival, it looks like the date is going to be Thursday, October 8th. And um, they swear it's going to be the most beautiful day of the year. <laughs> so with that, Julie, do you want to step up yes. and say a few things? Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, Melissa had, oh, Melissa had uh, an opportunity for us to take this uh, slot. I'm super excited. Uh, one, because we love our partnership with the American Royal, and so that was a fun uh, tie-in for us, but also we're inches away from the completion of our multi-million dollar renovation. You'll see just a few, may or may not see, just a few things still needing. We're still ramping up staff, which is why we're not clearing plates at the moment. We're still ramping up some of the other odds and ends, so we knew that you guys would be casual and accept some of our little, while we're getting settled, um, Speaking of that, please don't give up your fork. Um, there's pie over here, and you'll need your fork for pie. Um, Hilton Garden Inn is a brand that really prides itself on the brightness. 
Um, our renovation kind of reflects that brightness. Uh, it's an upscale brand that's intended to give leisure and business travelers an affordable opportunity to have an experience that's beyond your typical experience. We have 147 guest rooms, every one of them remodeled, beautiful, shiny new, um, about not quite half and half, some kings, some doubles. We also have some junior suites, so a little bit larger. What we're really excited about is our hospitality room on the top floor. It overlooks what's going to be the Merck Co-op over there. Um, and it's a room that we're going to invite you to come and use for about 10 people or fewer. It's a board table for eight, sofas, chairs, that sort of thing, very comfortable. You can have food and beverage serve it up, served up there. It'd be a great opportunity, if you don't have space in your own office, to let us host you and uh, conduct business. Um, this is our meeting room, divides into two, uh, for about 30 to 40 people, comfortably meeting on one side, lunch on the other, breaks, whatever. And if you came through the front doors, you saw our bar immediately to the right, and then our restaurant, which is open for breakfast seven days a week. Please come in and enjoy our breakfast buffet. It's the Hilton Garden Inn Standard. Um, it's delicious. Um, everything's prepared by our chef, John, John Scott, who prepared today's lunch. And we're just very thankful to have you. Thank you. All right, well, thanks for having me.
but having that impact around the world as well. That might be through events, that might be through education, celebrating our simple heritage and agriculture in an industry that impacts all of you multiple times a day, from when you get dressed to getting gas in your car, to the food, all of the different components. So our vision is lofty, um, but we are very, very excited for the future. So before I get too far, especially knowing that a lot of you are in and out of the Wyandotte County area, I wanted to talk about where it is. Um, so for those of you that aren't familiar here, um, we're running around State Avenue right here, and then 118th Street right there. So we're at a corner of 118th <coughs> State. And what you see there is approximately 118, excuse me, 115 acres. We announced that we acquired all of those in December, and so now officially kind of our PR, our presentations, our fundraising, everything is really launched. Um, it's the perfect location, obviously, the Kansas Speedway, Village West, Sporting KC, DFA, with close proximity to the Fairfax area. Um, so we are very, very excited. So, zooming in a little bit, and I'm just gonna give a brief overview of kind of the components here. So we purchased these 47 acres in January of last year. Those 47 acres, the main purpose is essentially for parking and trailers, because we will have a lot of them, especially for animal related events, or in the event that now we have a huge facility and make it really boom, there would be additional parking on that side. On this side, um, the whole thing is about 80 acres. We leased uh, 68 acres with a long-term uh, 99 year lease with the Patterson Family Foundation. Neil Patterson was a huge visionary leader for the American Royal and his daughter Lindsay is very, very supportive and helps us in many ways. There's also a proposed hotel, um, which would be approximately 12 acres, but that is not a development that the American Royal will be doing. Um, that would be through private, um, but we'll be connected and we look forward to working with that person in the end for a really strategic relationship. The spaces here, we have our auxiliary arenas here, so everything is super flexible. So you might have an arena in there one day, it might be open for a trade show the next day. So we're really thinking about not only taking what people know us for, the livestock show, a rodeo, World Series of Barbecue, which is at the Speedway, um, and we're really creating a space that allows us to hit a ton of different constituent groups. So in addition to that, we have our two barns here, or should be better called expo space. So we might have livestock in there one day, and the next week we have a high-end trade show, or a dance, or a big corporate meeting. And so we are being very strategic in the design to make sure, one, we don't want you to come in there and have it smell like animals. But at the flip side, we need to make sure that the animals are accommodated even when there's other things taking place. So this becomes a big open area um, for a ton of different programming. About 500,000 square feet of usable space there for programmatic stuff. So we have our main arena, uh, 5,000 permanent seats with the capability to go up to about 7,500 through some temporary bleachers and pull-out seating, or we can get up to about 9,000 if we do a concert using the floor. And then on these two blue areas, the darker blue on the bottom is our warm-up arena for our animals to get into the different arenas. On the upper level is about 40,000 square feet of very high-end space that would seat about 2,000 people in a corporate dinner. So if you think of a big uh, event or like a banquet hall, that would be somewhat similar in that capacity. And then the light blue is our education components, which is my favorite part that we'll get to here in just a little bit. So stepping back a little bit, um, why am I here? Why is this happening? What's going on? So we had a really royal opportunity multiple years ago, and a couple of things happened to result in that. Um, first of all, we are located um, downtown in the West Bottoms right now, started in 1899, so a long tradition there. Our facility is actually city owned though, so we are pretty limited in what we are able to do. Um, for instance, our season of events that you might know about is 14 weeks, and that's about the usage days that we get. So we have a great working relationship with the city of Kansas City, Missouri, but we're limited in the ability to really grow and do programming all year round. Additionally, if you've been there recently, it needs a little bit of a facelift in certain areas. Depending on where you've been, it might need a really good facelift in other areas. Um, but some of our uh, constituent experiences just need a little bit of improvement. Additionally, our events are getting too big. Um, a couple of things that started to happen is one, obviously, Hale Arena is now Kemper, excuse me, Kemper, Kemper Arena is now Ivy Arena. 
So our arena spaces is limited to Hale Arena, which is in the American Royal facility right now. And so way back when, the Royal Livestock Show and Rodeo used to be together. I don't know if any of you have been there when it was really booming and really crazy. And in fact, fun fact that I recently learned is that all of the Texas rodeos and livestock shows that we think of as these big, huge things were modeled after the American Royal. So how do we get back to that point? And so a new facility is going to be able to allow us to have that capacity. So all those things put together brought us to the fact, well, why don't we control our own destiny, take the opportunity that's in front of us, and really become this epicenter of agriculture and be the place that doesn't exist anywhere else in the world right now. So I'll be fairly quick on this because I'm sure a lot of you already know a lot of it. But as I said, we have a 120 year history. So we have a lot of tradition there, a lot of sensitivity there. The stuff that we are being very, very critical on trying to make sure that that is preserved at the new facility through our programming, through some of the design features, things like that. Um, we host the world's largest barbecue competition at the Speedway, our livestock show, our rodeos. But it's important to know that all of those are driven by education. We're a nonprofit, 501c3. All of our mission is back towards education. And one thing that we don't always realize from a public standpoint is outside of those 14 weeks, education is always rolling. Christy Larson, our director of education, is always in school. She was in one this morning. Um, and so in 2018, there was over 18,000 students impacted. So just think of what we could do if we had a facility that we could bring kids to every day of the year. So we are very, very excited about that. Um, as I kind of mentioned before, sometimes there's a misconception that the American Royal is failing or that the events aren't big. And they, all of them, <laughs> this last year, were insane. I'm looking at Kendra who now works here, but she was a huge help to us during the American Royal season that she used to work for us. And our livestock show, if you came down during the first week of this past year, every single inch of the facility, the parking lots, the roads around, the people were just parking wherever they could, much like the Royals Parade, the Chiefs Parade, mm -hmm. um, for the livestock show. And so we have that capacity. Um, the rodeo, for instance, we sold out our Saturday performance, including 200 standing room only tickets. So a lot of that is continually growing, but we're capped and we can't grow anymore right now. Which leads us to why we have that royal opportunity. But we're not just taking the American Royal as it exists today and moving it. We're not just building barns and arenas. We truly want to have a global impact and be the place for food and agriculture where maybe professionals in the industry come and they have different um, conversations about hot topics. Uh, maybe if things are going on of how do we figure out what we're going to do with the coronavirus and China trade resulting in agriculture, it happens at the American Royal. On an easier level, kids from all around the world can learn about where their food comes from through both physical programming and online programming and curriculum that can reach and span around the world. Um, so we really want to think big and globally, not just a Kansas City thing, not just a regional thing, but truly a global thing. So the way we're going to do kind of that global impact is essentially in three different categories. The first one is by hopefully developing an innovative campus. So on that map when you saw our facility, there's a lot of greenfield space around us. Approximately 550 acres, to which we sit in about a fifth of that. So it would be our goal that some additional development and co-location would happen with us. I'm not able to say any companies that have agreed or in talks yet, um, but there has been interest from multiple different types of people um, to come and co-locate, which creates more and more of those synergies. So if we're researching something across the street and we have the education side and the kids and the people there for events, why not figure out how to connect them? So our goal is to, you know, the conference center space, association headquarters, tech incubators. Kansas City is huge with technology right now and a lot of them are actually agricultural driven or at least related. So is there a way we can tie all those together? The next part, my favorite part, is the education. So as I said in one of the slides before, we do a lot of classroom work, um, but we're limited in what we can do right now. And so our goal would be to create this educational experience where hopefully you and your families just come. If you have an open Saturday, you come to the American Royal and you walk through it and you learn about food and agriculture. I hesitate to say museum, because when I think museum, I think I'm going to hit it once and check it off my list and I don't need to come back. 
and that's not what we're building. And we're thinking very, very interactive displays, partnerships with various corporations, um, and being able to constantly change because the world is changing around us every day. So let's showcase that. Um, additionally, it might be education from a first grader standpoint. It might be our understanding because a lot of us don't even know about all of the things that impact us through these industries. A couple of these spaces that you would have seen and been in that little blue area on the map. So learning labs. How cool would it be to come in and learn how to perfectly smoke a brisket or how to uh, have a kiddo come in and learn how to make a cheeseburger or eggs or something that sometimes certain families don't teach their kids that we could then help provide for them to then be more sustainable on their own. Classroom spaces, event space. There's a policy field hearing. Why not do it and broadcast it from the American Royal? Meeting spaces. No offense to the Hilton Garden Inn, but hopefully maybe once we could get in on the circle maybe and host a meeting like this. Um, an auditorium, so maybe it's a cattle auction one day, or it would be our dream to host an ag TED Talk type series where we bring in people from around the world that come and they provide a topic about food and agriculture. A recording studio, a marketplace, because I can't talk about food and then not actually help provide it somewhere for people to eat, right? Library and archives. Um, outdoor experiences, greenhouse space, catwalks, which we'll get to in a second, birthing center, milking parlor, sale facility, and the most glorious one, a carcass facility. <laughs> you might you will laugh at that one. So um, there's only a few carcass facilities around the nation. One of them is at a university in Texas, and you would be amazed at the corporate entities that go there for training. McDonald's would be a prime example. So if they are all traveling to Texas, why not put one in the center of the country and have more than one? Um, so there's been a lot of interest in that and more, it, not a ton of space would be needed to do it, but the impact would be huge. This is one of our renderings here. I said catwalks and it's sometimes hard to understand what that would mean. So when we were with the architects who've been fantastic and traveled with us to all of our benchmarking locations, one of the problems that we had was how do you separate people from animals when you need to from a safety concern? If there's a ton of cattle in here, you don't want kids un, um, that aren't uh, with someone just running around. So they came up with this idea of, well, education's your mission. It's what's most important. Why don't you integrate it throughout the entire facility? So no matter where you're at, you come for a concert, you come for a basketball game, you're being educated on food and agriculture. So they developed this concept to put these catwalks all around the facility, not only to have interactive displays going through them, but also so if something's happening down here, people can see the animals. They can see what the kids are doing to prep them for the livestock show or what they're doing to take care of their horse before they go ride. Um, and that kind of integration, we have not found anywhere else yet in all the places that we've benchmarked or researched. Lastly, uh, the third topic would be an event at the center. So as I said before, getting from that 14 weeks to 365 days of the year. And you think that might be extreme, but aside from two, which we'll get to here in a second, we have not actively recruited any of events. One, it's hard to recruit events when you don't have a facility built, or you don't have a booking process, or a pricing process, or all the square footage of the rooms decided. We are extremely close, though. Um, but to date right now, I've had over 80 events reach out to me wanting to book the American Royal for their events. Those events range from corporate symposiums to collegiate basketball tournaments to volleyball tournaments to dog shows, ad, corp or, uh, ad conferences, a number of different things. So we know that if all those people have reached out, what's going to happen when we say we're ready to book and we actually start recruiting? And I'm a little scared for that moment that's about to happen because I will get to be the person that helps with all that, but it'll be incredible. But the reason why that's happening is because of the location and the things that we're building. So the Village West area is perfect. Right off I-70, right off 45, easy access from the airport. You're right in the middle of all of the U.S. agriculture in America's breadbasket. So if you're really preaching the mission, you're right in the center of it. We have so many amenities. You would be amazed. So the two events that we recruited, the thing they were most excited about was the fact that there was a Panda Express close to our <laughs> So now I sell it all the time. There's Panda Express out there. There's all of the goods. 
And then, of course, having a million square feet of indoor space for our facility is very, very appealing to a number of different events. But we have this interesting thing of how do you take a barn and, one, make it look appealing, but two, have people understand that it's not just animal events, that it is going to be a place where you can host all types of different events every day, all throughout the year, bringing an entertainment type component, or better yet, you guys get off work and you're about 10 minutes away, come down and have a drink at the American Royal. Have lunch there for a business meeting. Um, so we're really, really trying to make sure that this is an atmosphere that is entertaining to everyone, but serves all of the needs. You can see this rendering isn't quite as done as all the other ones, but how cool is it that we could bring in club basketball tournaments and they walk into the facility and all of them are surrounded by the education that they have to walk through to get here. And so that's a very, very important message when in today's world there's so much misinformation or what does this mean or what does GMO mean and is it bad for me or, you know, we had a harsh winter, what happens? Um, people don't all know that anymore. So obviously then, here's our four, as we've been before. Um, and so this leads me into the two events that we did happen to go and recruit, which is all under one umbrella. So the National High School Rodeo Association is the largest rodeo in the world in terms of youth. Um, they bet out about 10 years in advance. And so we knew that last year, that we didn't at least get into it and try and recruit because one, as a city on facility, we've never recruited before. So it's a whole new arm to our association. So we went there to their midwinter meetings in Salt Lake City, just trying it. And sure enough, um, we were awarded the National Junior High Finals Rodeo in 2026 and 2027, which spurs a $9.8 million economic impact per year, which that's a two-year contract. And then they were like, hey, you should host the high school one too, which is substantially bigger, in 28 and 29, which is a $13.1 million economic impact. So in those four awesome. years, we will spur almost $45 million of economic impact from those two events. So a lot of people frequently ask me if FFA is going to come back because it was a core piece of the American Royal. And unfortunately, due to their size, Kansas City just doesn't have the capacity for the hotels and the space they need within that close of an area. This is somewhat the new FFA. Instead of blue corduroy jackets, it's cowboy hats and back numbers. Um, but we're very, very excited for that and that national piece of bringing world championships and national events, bringing all sorts of people to the area is something that we are positive that we can make happen. So everyone's like, okay, great, Taylor, this is wonderful. What, what's going on? So just a brief timeline. In fall of 2014 was when kind of the realization that we should maybe control our own destiny took place. In fall of 2016, it was announced that we were relocating to Kansas City, Kansas. You might say, well, Taylor, that was a long time ago. Um, but we have, <laughs> obviously we feel behind because we want it to happen as fast as possible. But when we looked at similar sized um, construction projects, we were actually ahead of the game. So we're on track, um, but it has been a long time coming. So we're excited for the next couple of months to get here. Um, we have continued to receive really strong support from the state of Kansas, from the government side, um, even through the government administration change. Um, we have great support, great relationships with all of them. Um, our project plan development was all approved in 2017. Um, earlier in 2019, the American Royal hired a new president and CEO, Glenn Allen Phillips, from the San Antonio Livestock Show and Rodeo. And if you want to talk about a guy that is ready to make the decision happen, um, it is him. He apologizes that he couldn't be here today, but his family, he's a daughter in high school, she's a senior, and so they're still in Texas. So he went home to uh, see a show of hers this week, and so he was unable to be here. Additionally, we hired Jackie McClaskey, who was previously the Kansas Department of Agriculture Secretary, and she's the president of the development for the new campus. So her and I are essentially the two, um, aside from our visionary team, um, that are the boots on the ground. Um, earlier this year, um, we all of our preliminary plans have been continuing on with the unified government. Um, we're finishing that process and submitting our final development plan here in a couple weeks. Um, the plan will be to then break ground ceremonial in spring, early summer, with construction starting in the summer. 18 month construction, so the goal would be done, goal to be done by the end of 2021, with then events being there held in 2022. 
So that season, even though it will begin to change and take more form, um, as you know it right now, won't take place until 2022. So we uh, will have a very exciting couple of uh, couple of months coming up. And so I'm sure you all have questions, but um, here are all of our contact information. So Glenn Allen, Jackie, and myself. And I think to just kind of put a call out to action with all of you here, and since you are all neighbors of ours, you know, we, uh, we're very, very excited and we appreciate opportunities to speak like this. So if you have anything, please feel free to reach out to me and we would love to come and present. Um, we would also welcome if you guys are supportive of any, you know, retweet. It could be as simple as sharing something on Facebook or if you know of an event that might be interested, feel free to direct them my way. Um, or if you yourself would like to get more involved or maybe even know someone, whether it's personal or from a corporate side that would want to get more involved, whether it's a service or financial and project, um, please let me know. So with that, I'll take questions. I probably should know this, but how did the American Royal name come about? Ooh, that is a wonderful question. Kendra, you might know more than I do on this one. So from what I gathered, um, it was based off of the ro like a, a the a European royal yeah. over in the UK yeah. and the yeah it's something something along those lines yeah Kendra worked for us directly with our volunteers and our governorships and so the history component is there some of you might know that the Royals the baseball team was named after the American Royal but uh, yeah when I switched from the National Hereford show it was from someone that had been overseas at a fairly similar type show. Mm -hmm. The Royals, very British, that sort of thing. Yep. Is that kind of how it came back over? And brought it over to the United States, trying to uh, create that on the U.S. side. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? <coughs> you mentioned, you know, bringing together conventions and so on. Mm -hmm. One of the largest conventions <coughs> held in Las Vegas is the shopping center convention every year. Okay. Will we be able to handle? I mean, I'm looking at hotel rooms in Las Vegas and the lack of them here. Will we ever be able to handle that type of a, of a convention here? Because I think this is, would be the number one egg place to have a convention. Yeah. It all depends on what type of people they bring in. Um, I know that right now, uh, wherever Kate is, there's like 1,183 rooms in Village West, right? I lost her. Um, and then our, the hotel that would be connected to ours would bring another 250. Um, so those, there's substantial hotel rooms there, but just depend on how willing those associations are to kind of broaden out a little bit and what the radius is of how close they need to be towards the convention areas and meeting space areas. But that would definitely be the goal. You know, if you were to take all of the roofs off and open it all up, we would have over a million square feet of space for those types of shows. I mean, you could do it on the arena floor, you could do it in the barn spaces. So we have that capacity, but the hotels will be an interesting thing on a case-by-case -case basis. And fully honest, I'm not aware enough of that specific one to know what their hotel needs are yet. Mm -hmm. um, will the American Royal Barbecue still be over at the Speedway? Or will so that is the plan for right now. Um, they are an incredible partner of ours. It is a great location to host the American Royal Barbecue. So at this time, we have no reason to move. Now, obviously, as an association, you want to always control your own destiny, and there could be outside factors that would ever affect the Kansas Speedway that we would not know about or be able to control. So there's always that in the back of our mind of how would we do it if, um, and having the land next to us would be great. Um, but at this time, no, they've been a great partner of ours. Answer Mr. Daly's question on the American Royal Academy. Yeah. Lou Long, who was um, the daughter of R.A. Long, won all those contests in England, and she was a big supporter of starting the American Royal. And she, so she wanted it to be royal, she made it American Royal. But it, it was through Lou, is how we got that name. Well, thank you. I am going to put it on my to-do list to do some uh, history searching on this, but I appreciate the uh, questions. Richard Sarnia. Yeah. No, that's awesome. You hear little bits and pieces around, but to really get the full story, I have not sat down with that yet. All right, anything else? Well, thank you again so much. As I said at the beginning, you guys are our favorite types of presentations because you're the people that we get to interact with. So. 
please, please feel free to reach out with, to me, even if you just have feedback. Like, Taylor, you should have said this or done it a little differently. We love to hear your opinions. And uh, thanks again for having me.